Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome to this week's Georgia State Sports Update. Welcome to this week's show. Dave Cohen joined in studio by the head women's golf coach at Georgia State. That's Kathy Mant. Kathy, thanks for coming in and joining us. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your season this year. you got a young squad, but you guys just finished up uh, the John Kirk Panther Intercollegiate out there uh, in uh, south of Atlanta. Tell me a little bit about how that tournament went, what you uh, learned from your squad after that tournament. Well, I thought the tournament was went really well. We had 15 teams from far, as far away as California, Brown University, Michigan, so we had a wide variety of people here playing. Um, our team did finish 9 out of 15th, and we lost, unfortunately, uh, 9 shots in the last 2 holes the last day, so that would have made a huge difference uh, for our performance. Um, the girls have been working hard, and uh, we had had higher expectations for, for our finish, but we'll just take what we learned from this one and move on to the conference and see what we can do there. Well, you know, you and I were talking. You got a young squad this year. You've been coaching a long time. You played collegiately and professionally, and we'll talk about that a, a little bit later. But do you find yourself more in a teaching role, maybe in a coaching role that you would be in with a more experienced team? I think that's true in a lot of different different areas. I mean, not only are we looking at some swing mechanics and chipping mechanics, and we're really working a lot on short game mechanics. The kids don't know the different shots that they need, and so we're experimenting, and they don't trust it yet. And we're definitely seeing that when we compete. Um, but on, on the other side, I think that just the mental side of it, course management, we still need to work on that. Um, they're going at flags when their game isn't their A game. And when that happens and you miss, you're, you sh do what's called short shotting yourself and make it very, very difficult to score. So we're working on when you go, when you don't. A lot of mental things as well as some of the mechanical things. Well, you mentioned the mental things. Uh, how do you coach that? I mean, somebody could have all of the mechanics mm -hmm. Uh, but struggle with what's between the ears. How do you right. kind of coach that and maybe balance it out so that it can be turned into a successful collegiate golfer? It's been tough, Dave, because we are, are trying to get these kids to think positively of themselves. They're, you know, keep telling them, you're some of the best in the world. And we've taken them to some, actually we played with some of the ladies at the club the other day, and I said, do you guys get it? You guys get how good you are when you see what the general public does. But we've done a couple things this year. We've uh, uh, are starting to work with a sports psychologist and making them think so that we can get in the moment, think about just the one shot at a time. Um, we are working on how to plan when you are out there, what to think from this situation, how would you go about, where do you, where do you want to go. It is one shot at a time, it's like I'm sure many of the other sports that have some similarity to us. It's one shot at a time, full commitment to that. You're going to see that at the Masters this week. You know, you're going to, even the comparisons, it'll be a great teaching aid for the kids. Talking to Kathy Matt, the women's golf coach here at Georgia State, and we just mentioned how young this team is compared to maybe what you've had in the last couple of years. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She's a freshman. Is it uh, Jemima Gregson? It's Jemima. Jemima. And uh, she's actually our number one player right now. Her stroke average has been going down since her first event. I guess she was pretty nervous. Um, <laughs> Jemima has great talent, and I see a great future for her in her personal game, but also as she helps Georgia State to to uh, advance in, on our performance. Um, Jemima's from England, tall, still makes a couple little mistakes, but we're working on it, and I think she's going to do just great. Um, our couple sophomores are ste have stepped in. Uh, Yasmin Sari, who uh, is from Germany. Yasmin posted the lowest round this year, shot 68, had it seven under par, um, and gave a couple shots back, but uh, I, she's a real talent. And so we have the combination of this duo stepping up. Uh, I think it'll be great as they're learning a couple of the areas that they need to improve on, and we're going to see some good scoring coming from them. Well, you mentioned uh, Jemima's from England, and I was looking over the roster. You've got players from England, Germany, Korea, Norway, and Spain. And France. And France. Yeah. We are not, You're earning a lot of frequent flyer miles uh, <laughs> recruiting in the offseason, are we yeah, not? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I only get to make one trip <laughs> over there, so we've got to make it good when we go. But, uh, yes, our, our kids are from all over the world, and... Um, come from some really fine backgrounds, some great 
golf coaching from a standpoint that they represent their countries in some of the international tournaments so we're looking for that all to come to gather gel and see what we can see what we can accomplish now when you go overseas to recruit and you've had some outstanding golfers here over the years that have been from you know outside of the united right. states is georgia state well known uh, overseas and maybe some of the european countries uh, as far as being a successful place with regards to collegiate golf i think when we look at uh, the women's golf program at georgia state yes it is becoming much more well known and the players that have been here have loved their experience um, they promote us they're still carrying a Georgia State bag when they compete in the uh, events that they do at home. And so, yes, people are familiar with Georgia State. And Atlanta is a great place to come. Uh, when we look at what uh, these international kids are looking for, it's an easy access in and out from right. their countries. We've got great weather. We've got the city that we can sell with all the great things that uh, go on in Atlanta, food, shopping, concerts, you name it, we sell all of that. And uh, it's an opportunity for kids internationally um, to get an education while they can also pursue their sport and maybe try to reach the next level of professional sports. In their countries, they can't chase after both avenues. They either have to be an academic or an athlete. And here in our country, they can be both. Of course, you can uh, buzz in and buzz out from anywhere with Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, right. the first and or second, uh, depending on what week it is, largest airports in the country. So tell me the difference in your recruiting. Um, and you see this at a number of different schools. It seems like in tennis and in golf, it's a lot of We'll, what we'll call European or foreign right. uh, international students. What about recruiting the kids that are domestic? Uh, you know, what's the difference when you're out recruiting between the two, skill-wise, what you see? I, I think the things that we see that are, di that are different. Uh, initially, I would have to say recruiting here at Georgia State, we just didn't get a lot of U.S. kids that wanted to come downtown. Right. That's changed. In the last two years, we've had more contacts from kids than in my 15 years of being here. So it's it's increasing. And I think that our, what I'd like to see is a ratio of about 50-50 international and uh, and U.S. kids and, and get some Georgia kids in there, which we actually have two walk-ons coming um, this year from Georgia. But, uh, I, you know, I think our future is great with, with what we're doing. Smart group you got. You were telling me the highest GPA amongst all the teams in the Georgia State Athletic Department, 3.79. Right. Our kids are, are, are dedicated athletes and they're dedicated academic academias or whatever we would say. I mean, they're doing a fantastic job. They have great time management skills. And one of the reasons we do like to have the internationals here is that their educational programs are quite stringent. They're able to keep up with the education demands that we have here at Georgia State. Um, and I, I think that's made it so that their time management skills of doing all of the, the studying and with all that we do uh, when we're practicing and as much as we are away, they've done a fantastic job. Well, kudos to you, the winningest golf coach in Georgia State Athletics history. It leads me into a question. You played at the highest level 10 years on the LPGA Tour, and yet you also enjoy teaching. Do you find it difficult sometimes when you've played at the highest level and been successful to then turn around and teach? folks that maybe weren't as talented as you are? Well, or I, I, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I, I, I was able to make it out there for 10 years, but I've actually learned a lot. And what I share with our kids are all the mistakes that I made and all the things that I didn't do well. And I'm t I tell them, I'm trying to cut the timeline for you guys. So you don't have to go through the misery. Um, if so we can just get at it and uh, help you with, with the things that will help you to reach your goals, if in fact it is to play professional golf. So that experience has been great. And I, I think it's just a natural transition, at least it has been for me. I love teaching. I love being able to share what I know with the young kids that are here and to help them to get better. All right, Kathy, you ready for some questions from the Panther fans? I'm ready. All right, time now. Questions for Georgia State women's golf coach Kathy Mann. My name is Emin Meinhold. My major is multimedia reporting. Coach, now that the regular season is over, how do you prepare your team for the conference tournament knowing that a spot in NCAA regional play is on the line? Well, we've talked about this from the very beginning of the year. It's been one of our goals as a team. And so after our tournament completed, uh, the John Kirk Panther tournament was finished this last week. We have now identified some more things that we can work and improve on, and we're really hitting it hard, and that's the emphasis of our practice. Our goal is to win the conference championship and move on to the NCAA regionals. I'm Jamal Goss, a multimedia journalism student. It appears as though you had a young team this year. What are some of the biggest challenges when you have a younger team on the course? 
Well, having a young team that comes into Georgia State, they have so many adjustments to make, and especially when we're talking about uh, international student athletes. Not only are they adjusting to our country and the time and the food and, and just society in general, but they're having to adjust to a team atmosphere, um, playing collegiate golf. So there really are a number of things, and then we, we talk about how we work as a team and how we practice as a team. Um, so it's a big process to get them to feel comfortable first and then to, to buy into some of the things that we're trying to help them with technically and mentally. My name is Regine Amos. I'm a journalism major, and I would like to know, away from golf, what do you like to do in your spare time? Is there an off-season for you? Well, we actually in, in women's golf and men's golf don't have much of an off-season because we do play all year. So we start uh, practice the uh, middle of uh, August, and then we practice until the beginning of November. We compete. We have five events in the fall. And then uh, in the spring, which is our really a competition season as it's referred to, we ha will have, uh, we have four events plus our conference championship and then hopefully postseason play. So we are busy the entire time. The only time we're not is vacation when school's out. All right, Kathy, good questions and uh, good answers this week. Well, thanks, Dave. <laughs> All right, well, again, right around the corner, Sunbelt Conference Golf Championships, April 17th through 19th, down in uh, where Miramar, Florida. That's a tough place to go to play golf, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Somebody has to do it, though, <laughs> Dave, and so we're, we're happy that we can represent Georgia State and University down there. All right, well, appreciate you coming in, and best of luck down there. Thanks a lot. All right, I want to thank women's golf coach Kathy Matt coming in studio, joining us here at the Georgia State Sports Update. Busy time, as always, in athletics at Georgia State. Time now for On the Schedule. This week in Georgia State Athletics, two events on Saturday, April the 9th at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Georgia State softball against the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette out at the Bob Heck Softball Complex at Panthersville. And at 2 o'clock, court volleyball against Georgia in the GSU Sports Arena. One event on Sunday, April the 10th, 12 noon, softball again against UL Lafayette. That'll be out at Panthersville's Heck Softball Complex. And two events on Tuesday, April 12th at 5 o'clock, softball hosting Alabama. Alabama State out at Panthersville and uh, at 6 o'clock uh, baseball against USC Upstate out at the ballpark at Panthersville and that's what's coming up this week in Georgia State Athletics. And we're back in schedule on the Georgia State Sports Update this week. We've talked women's golf. Right now we're going to change direction a little bit. We're going to welcome in Jason uh, Marshall. He's the head women's tennis coach here at Georgia State. And Jason, thanks for coming in. And uh, you guys are riding high right now. Currently ranked 47th in the country, 10-5, and 2-0 and in the Sun Belt. And you guys are going to finish out the season in Boone. How's, how have things gone to this point? Yeah, we've had a great season, much better than we expected. Um, and yeah, we had some big wins early in the season, and uh, we've uh, had a really good conference. Uh, we won both of our matches uh, last week, um, and looking forward to playing uh, Troy in South Alabama this weekend. Well, right now, uh, women's tennis on a three-match winning streak. Georgia Southern, Appalachian State, and Charlotte. We were kind of kidding. You beat Georgia Southern, season over. I mean, as long as you beat Georgia Southern. Is the rivalry the same on the tennis courts as we see it on the basketball arena and the football field and, and even on the baseball diamond and softball as well? Well, it's always Georgia Southern. I mean, some of our, some of our, our team doesn't know, but we know it's always being watched in the media. And when we play them, we always want to make it a big match for us. And just we want to we want to beat them as, as much as we can and to make a statement, you know, not, not just for the conference, but also just for our rivalry with them. Let's talk a little bit about the season overall because, as I mentioned uh, in the open, ranked 47th right now, which means your team's playing some pretty good tennis. What has this team done to get a number 47 ranking? Well, the big thing was in um, early February, we uh, went up to South Carolina. We played Furman on a Saturday, and uh, we played um, USC on a Sunday. And we played well uh, at Furman. We beat them 6-1. We were really feeling uh, great about our game, and then we were – the underdog going into South Carolina. I think they were at the time, they were 31 in the country and we were not ranked at all. And uh, we, we, we didn't focus on that. We just focused on what we've been doing in practice all week and everything that's led up to the match. And uh, we went in there and we played great. And it was, uh, it, was, it was probably one of my most memorable matches ever as a tennis coach, just because it wasn't the fact that we beat, we were the underdog and we won 4-3. It was, it was more the fact that 
we overcame so much adversity in that match. I think, you know, out of three of the four points that we won, we were down match points in all of them. And I think we were down a total of nine combined match points to lose that match. Right. And to come in and, and win it like that and have two of our freshmen were the last two on and they came back and, and won that match for us when we were down 3-2, I mean, it was quite impressive. I, I, I mean, I wasn't expecting that. And you know, you're playing against a, a pretty big crowd and a pretty, uh, a pretty vibrant team. And they, South Carolina, I mean, they, they do a great job of bringing a lot of energy to college tennis. And to see our girls overcome that and mentally stay focused, it was, it was just a great match. And then, and then South Carolina went on to go from 31 to I think they were as high as eight in the nation. They beat uh, uh, Wake Forest, they beat LSU, and then, so they went on. So it really helped elevate our, our ranking um, throughout the course of the next few weeks. Um, and we went up in the rankings as well, and uh, we're holding on to that win, and we have another ranked win. I mean, we beat Winthrop as well. Uh, they, were, they were in the 50s when we beat them about three weeks ago, and so that's just, again, shows that we're, we, we're playing on a national level, and uh, we know that we're a tough team that no one wants to face. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, Lynn Timmerman, uh, number one singles and part of a number one doubles team with Tarani Kamoi. Yeah, Lynn's a great player. It's just been great to see her develop over the last couple of years. Um, I mean, she's got an, an amazing forehand. I mean, anytime she's set up for the ball, it's danger. She's, she, she plays very quick. She, uh, it's very difficult to play Lynn because Lynn hits the ball so deep and so flat. And uh, as a tennis player, you know, her style of tennis, it's, you always feel rushed. And so um, many players that have trouble with her, they just can't play at her pace. She plays too quick, and in doubles, uh, it's a great combination with uh, with Tarani because um, she it, Tarani is more of our net player. She's the one that moves a lot. She's the one. She's kind of the one that puts the balls away. She has. She's the left hander. So I mean, any any time you have a left hander and a right hander in doubles, it makes for a great combination just because of uh, the forehands going through the middle, or even just throwing off your opponents a little bit because of the style of speed of speeds and spins. And uh, they make a great combination. I mean, I myself was a lefty, so I know the combination of playing uh, with a lefty-righty combo, it's, it's great. It's great to have them playing together. Well, and you were a former collegiate player as well. You played at Purdue. You were an assistant coach at TCU. Uh, this is your first head coaching job at Georgia State. Off to a great start. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, I've had, this is my, I think, eighth year of coaching collegiate tennis, and I just love it. I love, I love being here, and I've, every year I'm growing as a coach and I'm learning more about my players. I'm just learning more about how to run the program, and it's kind of a trial and error for every, for every coach, just what work, what doesn't work, and being able to really, at the end of the day, it's about adjusting. It's, it's, it's not so much about how well you coach, it's about how well you adapt to your players. I think that's one of the, um, cause, because with tennis, it's such an individual sport. Yeah. You, if you coach everyone the same, it doesn't work, say, someone w in a different sport. So it's really relating to the player and what works for them or what doesn't work. And when you can get the most out of your players, I mean, you see we, we have a great season so far, and I think it's going well. All right, ready for some questions from the Georgia State fans? Yeah, absolutely. All right, time now. We're going to take some questions for women's tennis coach Jason Marshall. My name is Jacqueline Coyar, and I'm a journalism major. Coach, your team is currently 10 to 5 and has won three straight matches. Do you feel like you're playing your best tennis of the year? I would say yes. Uh, it's kind of had that we've had a transition, kind of, there's multiple transitions in a season where you go from outdoors to indoors, back to outdoors, then back to indoors. And we've had a lot of that going on this season. And I think with weather starting to warm up more, I think it favors our, our team. A lot and um, that's why I feel like going into the later part of the season uh, we're playing better and better um, throughout the course of the season. My name is Chinua Maponya Cook and I'm a graduating senior here at Georgia State University majoring in broadcast journalism. Now Coach Marshall I've got a question for you. You've had several really good wins this season but is there one that sticks out more to you than the rest? Oh yeah South Carolina which I explained earlier um, just an amazing an amazing match I mean it's one of those I mean we still even talk about that to this day just we can always go back no matter you know how well we're playing or maybe if we're in a little bit of a hole we can always go back to that match and, and use that as confidence 
uh, for our girls and they came together and what they did. And we know that the success that they've had, we never count us out at any opponent that we play because we know um, we're capable of, of being dangerous on any given day. My name is Kaja Mapp and I am a senior journalism student. Coach, my question is, the Sunbelt Conference Championships are just a few weeks away. How do you prepare your team with so much on the line? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most important things is getting our conditioning and fitness level up. It's tough when you're, when you're playing a whole season and you play a lot of matches. You also want to recover from those matches and rest from those matches. So the past few weeks, we've been doing a little more fitness because we know when we go to New Orleans, I mean, it's, it's hot and it's humid and we have to play three matches in a row and they get tougher as you go. So, I mean, I think that if we go into that tournament being the fittest team, I think we certainly give ourselves a great shot. I mean, we know we have the talent to win the conference. It's just making sure that we have everyone in great shape to be able to adjust to those conditions that are much different than what's in Atlanta. All right, well, best of luck up there and good luck in New Orleans. Thank you, appreciate uh, it. Yeah, thanks for coming in this week. Yeah. All right, I want to thank uh, the women's tennis coach, Jason Marshall, coming in and joining us on the Georgia State Sports Update this week. And time now for another segment of Games with Kelly. Kelly. I'm your host, Kelly Livingston. Joining me today is women's volleyball player, Christina Stinson. Hey. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Thank you. Are you ready to play a little bit of Sorry uh, with me? Yes, let's go. Let's do this <laughs> let's thing. Let's do it. Well, guess first. Go ahead, All draw right. a card. Okay. You're blue, I'm yellow. We got one. <gasps> Coming out of there. Tell me what you're uh, studying. Here at I State. am actually studying education. I want to be a High school teacher, I'm in middle level education right now, but okay. I, wanna, I wanna teach high school, so, and coach eventually, so. Oh, so yeah. Is there a, a particular subject you wanna teach? I wanna do language arts. Language yes, arts? Yes, I'm a big fan of grammar and all that good stuff. Oh my gosh. There we go. Oh, okay. Four, I do nothing. So you don't move backward yet? No. Okay. I'm stuck in the hole. Stuck in there. In the honey pot. Eight, so I get to go? Yes. Ooh, okay, okay. Come on, give me a one. Come on! <laughs> you shuffled these. So you have to get the one and then you move backwards, right? Or a one or a two and I can okay. come out. Okay, move from start and switch places with an opponent. Oh! oh! Wait, oh! wait, wait. Wait, what does that even mean? I don't know, but I... Move from start and switch places with an opponent. What? <laughs> what was that? So do you go back in your... Own? I, the blue nest? I, I don't know. Or do I take out all of them? No, and you don't I do win? That. <laughs> Does no, that mean no, I win? No, no. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a game for children, yet it's so hard. <laughs> it's so complex. <laughs> well, you start and you keep. Well, it's like switch you switch with me. So, so, so I guess. <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't you have to be out of your thing, though? Yeah, yeah get that back there. All right. This guy back so here. So your season is over. So what are you yes. What are you doing now? Well, right now we're in our spring season, so we're doing a lot of training. Okay. Um, we're lifting, conditioning, and having team practice. So we actually play Kennesaw State on Sunday, and then Ooh. we play UGA, and we have an Emory tournament too, so that's, that'll be really fun. Good competition for sure, just to that's see how our hard work has really paid off. Yeah. So, so yeah, super excited. So, uh, who is your biggest competition within this conference? Would you say? Oh man, it's hard to say right now because everything is it changes. <sighs> Ooh, look at that slide. Oh my gosh. Because everything, every it changes every year. They get new people that come in, but. I think one of our top competitors, I think it always it's always fun to play Georgia Southern because it's just that in-state rivalry, yeah. you know, like the real GSU. We are the real GSU. Uh, so. Yes, I've heard yes. that before. Yes. <laughs> Move forward 11 or change places with an opponent. No, 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 no,
I don't know. Well, that's okay. You know, that's fine. I don't know where I was. I think it was like right there. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, let's see what we got. This is amazing. Oh my the gosh, I'm the so, tables I'm have so turned. I'm so mad. You uh, look so mad I'm, too. I'm furious. You're like, here is happy, in tears, <laughs> anger. <laughs> Have a smile on, but I'm not smiling. Oh, inside. you get to you get to pull another yeah. guy. Yay. Yay! Okay, there we go. And you get to draw again. Oh my gosh! Move forward, eleven no! or change with an opponent. Don't do it! Don't do yeah, it! Yeah, no, that's happening. So if you had to tell any young gal who's considering Georgia State, mm -hmm. what would you tell her? Uh, I would definitely tell her to come here for sure <laughs> because you have so many opportunities here and it's really, really cool just to just look around. Like even when you're walking to class, walk, you look up and you see like all these like big buildings and like, you know, there's huge companies in there that you can go and work for eventually and do yeah. internships with and stuff. And even like for me, I there's like local schools and stuff that I can go to and teach at. So it's, I think it's really cool. And there's so many places to go shopping, like Walgreens, I guess. If you got to spend a day with a Hollywood actor or actress, who would you spend the day oh with? Oh my gosh. Let's well, say an actor and first, an actress. The first one that came to my mind for actor was Leonardo DiCaprio because he just won an Oscar. That's so exciting. He did. And he ate uh, Girl Scout cookies. All right, actress. Actress, probably Julie Andrews because she is just, she's a wonderful woman. If okay. you could travel anywhere in the next year. In the next year? Where would you go? Oh my gosh. I really want to, this is like a, Weird place to go, but I really want to go to Finland. Like really, really good. Okay. Because a girl on my team is actually from there. Anna is from there, and so we all want to go as like a team to kind of see where she's from and all that stuff. When I think of Finland, I think of where the movie Frozen would take place. Yeah, which yeah. Which it may not be there. I think it's like I think it's based on some kind of like real place. I don't. Yeah, so who are you wearing today? Tell me, tell me who? what you're oh, wearing. Well, you know, a little bit of Gucci. <laughs> All that good stuff. No, this is just, you know, the typical attire that we wear during the day. <laughs> a little bit of Nike going on, you know, right. that's our sponsor. So, nice. gotta represent, I'm not sure. This started very competitive, yeah. but it is ending very yeah. kind and <laughs> sing-songy and happy, which is not <laughs> It does not work like it that. It doesn't work no. like that. Uh, flip this table. Ah, <laughs> never again. Move forward 10 or backward one. Oh my gosh. I think you won like 30 minutes ago. Wow. <laughs> yes. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you thank so you. much for coming yeah, and letting us get to know you yeah. as a player and a person. <laughs> and we uh, look forward to seeing you play yeah, again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Panther Nation, for joining us. Dave, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Kelly, and that'll do it for this week's show. I want to thank our guests in studio, women's golf coach Kathy Mitt and women's tennis coach Jason Marshall. For the entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. We'll see you here next week in the Georgia State Sports Update.